We all know it for a fact that science has never failed to fascinate us with its amazing discoveries. Now imagine this, you are driving your Figo and on the opposite track you find a car approaching but you don't find anyone sitting on the driver's seat. Annabelle, the moment you say it, many questions might pop up in your head. What if two cars come in the opposite direction? Can accidents be prevented in such cases? For this to happen, there should be some kind of communication that should take place between these two cars. But what is the basic technology behind this? Hold on, because by the end of this video, you are going to find answers for all these questions. This is Abhijit from Shastra Shnehi. Let's talk about 5G. In today's world, everything is just a finger touch away, but things weren't the same three decades back. Late in 1980s, communication was restricted to only voice calls between two people and that can be considered as the first generation of wireless networks. The 1990s saw the rise in second generation where services like SMS, MMS and fax were included along with the voice calls. Then in 2001, 3G technology introduced mobile data which allowed users to send and receive multimedia and the fourth generation ushered the era of mobile internet. The increasing number of users and rising demand of data opened the doors towards the next generation of what is known as 5G. Many do believe that the main reason behind the invention of 5G technology is for acquiring faster data speeds. But you know what? This is just one of the many advantages that 5G has. Going back to the case of autonomous cars that we have discussed earlier, we assume that there should be some kind of communication that happens between these two cars coming in the opposite direction. Here it is. 5G technology plays a very important role in here. But what exactly is 5G? From the data we collected, what we know is that there are five technologies that can be considered as the building blocks of 5G technology. Millimeter waves, small cells, massive MIMO, beam forming, and full duplex. We all are familiar with the terms frequency and wavelength of a signal. And we also know that larger a signal is, longer the distance it can travel, even if there might be some obstructions in their path but the strength of the signal will decrease as the distance increases. Whereas for a signal of very high frequency, the strength of the signal will be very high, but they might find it difficult to get through the obstructions. So with this basic information, we can now understand the type of electromagnetic waves that can be used for communication. Hope you all are familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum. From the figure, we can now understand that the waves of electromagnetic spectrum are used for communication. But these frequencies get more crowded as more devices come into use and the services are going to get slower. In order to overcome this, 5G will use a whole new spectrum of radio waves with frequency of 30 GHz to 300 GHz which is known as high frequency millimeter waves. But as we know, these waves are incapable of penetrating through obstacles. Since millimeter waves find it difficult to propagate through obstacles, thousands of small cell towers will be installed close enough just to make sure that the propagation of waves are easier when compared to the currently installed traditional towers. Moving on, 5G is expected to be 40 times faster than the current 4th generation cellular networks thanks to the small cell towers that can support up to 100 ports which is massive MIMO technology. Just imagine the amount of signals that will be emitted from all these users. What if it is spread in all the different directions? To overcome this, researchers introduced the concept of beam forming, which is steering the signal to only one direction, that is to the internet user. Today's traditional base stations are used to either transmit or receive data at a particular time. But here in 5G, we use full duplex, which can send and receive data simultaneously and thereby increasing its efficiency. And finally, just like two faces of a coin, it's of prime importance to address the impacts of 5G and the concerns and conspiracy related. Recent news reports and several social media post rise voices against the 5G saying uh, it's something that can impose harmful effect on our society. Don't you find it really sarcastic if they say that this pandemic, COVID-19, is one among 5G impacts? Radio waves might seem deadly to flora and fauna of the system. Really? If so, why can't the basic electromagnetic radiation, the sunlight, affect us in each and every minute? However, this one seems effective only under the superstitious explanation of eclipses arises, right? 
There are a lot of unscientific reasons that fall under the consequences of this advanced networking system and it's high time to make people aware of the impacts of 5G and make them know what it actually does. Let me explain the major ones that every layman ponders. Small cells placed at frequent distances means more towers and more radiation. Does it become a factor of health issues? Not exactly. Towers are just meant to reduce the loss of signal strength what is known as attenuation or simply gets lost from the signal range. The initial process might be costlier, the construction of so many cell towers, but it is accessible for long-term maintenance. Is 5G accessible to our 4G devices? If not, my 4G phone has to be replaced at a very high cost. There is nothing like that. 5G, as you may have understood, is not a new network system. It just get added up to the existing 4G for high browsing speeds without latency. If you are a user of 4G, all you have to do is just upgrade your device once 5G implementation is made accessible. Fortunately, dual connectivity may enable devices to work on both 4G and 5G. What about stargazers? Does the low orbiting satellites make their night sky observations distracted? That too is under consideration. Many companies like Starlink have announced that they are going to deal with this problem. The ongoing works on satellite coating materials is fairly a good example for this. All these bothers us when conspiracies arise. So take your time to really understand what makes 5G a leading one both in its enormous uses and rise of rumors. We are not ending up with 5G. Ongoing studies and networking facilities on 6G, 7G and even 10G by various countries like Korea, Norway and China gain popularity in recent telecommunication news. What if we move forward without understanding what these happenings really does? Are we to witness more such posts and petitions filed? More such strikes and protests? More conspiracies as communication networks gone advancing to more Gs? Or are we to comprehend and actually realize what are the real advantages and drawbacks of this? Let's wait and see.